if any of this is true, why didn't she necessarily go through all of the proper channels? Or, you know, why now? What, what's your take on it, John? Well, I don't know, uh, but she said that the reason she didn't make a formal complaint was because she was told that uh, uh, the Conservative Party would destroy her career if she did. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very um, murky story. Um, there's no reason to disbelieve her. Equally, it sounds incredibly unwise for Mark Spencer, the chief whip, to have said what he is alleged to have said. Um, I don't know why. Uh, Boris Johnson uh, sacked her as a minister, and uh, we need to we need to find out uh, we need to find out more. Basically, I can't I can't help you any further. But how does this? Uh, I suppose we will find out more as time goes on about this particular uh, incident. Uh, but how does this bode more generally in terms of the Islamophobia allegations the Conservative Party has had previously? Because they did conduct an investigation into previous allegations of they widespread did. in investigation, uh, widespread Islamophobia in in the Conservative Party. Do you think this will have any bearing on all of that? Uh, yes, clearly. Uh, I mean, there are. Uh, you know, more than one uh, Muslim uh, cabinet ministers. Uh, so, and they will, they will no doubt uh, press, uh, press to, to, to pursue this. And, you know, Boris Johnson has been in trouble over some of his comments uh, about uh, the burqa and so on. Uh, so it is a very, very much a live issue in the Conservative Party. And uh, it is going to cause the Prime Minister even further problems if he's still there. Do, do you honestly really think that someone will have sat down, in this day and age, right, would have sat someone down, right, and said, your Muslimness is an issue, when there are Muslim cabinet ministers, as you've said, there's plenty of Muslims who are members of the Conservative Party, and, frankly, that's out-and-out out racism. Do you, do, you, do you really think that's, that's possibly happened? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's extraordinary. Yes, you're right. I, I think it's it would be... a a remarkable thing for uh, Mark Spencer to have done. And, and as you say, he denies it. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's no accounting for, for, for what politicians sometimes say in private. Uh, that, well, there is, uh, yeah, yeah moving on to uh, what we mentioned as well a bit earlier, that Sue Gray report is mm. set to be released maybe sometime this week, uh, at the end of this week or, or next week. Um, how do you think this will change the state of play for the Prime Minister, depending on what this report says? I'm assuming it will say that there was some rule breaking that did take place. But do you think the release of the report could change anything significantly for, for Boris Johnson? Oh, yeah. I think it could be the end of his uh, his time as prime minister. Um, I mean, not immediately. Uh, I did notice, you know, Dominic Raab was asked if he would be prime minister by the end of this week. Uh, that's not quite how it, how it works, uh, because there would have to be a vote of uh, confidence in uh, Boris Johnson's leadership among uh, Conservative MPs first. And I think uh, that, on balance, I think that is likely to happen. I think it's very much... Uh, poised on a knife edge, uh, but I think there will be 54 MPs after the after Sue Gray reports. I don't think it matters particularly what she reports. We know, uh, we know the essence of it, and we know that the Prime Minister himself has admitted that that uh, uh, work event, as he called it, in the Garden of Number 10, uh, shouldn't have gone ahead. He should have asked uh, the civil servants to go inside. So he's admitted he made a mistake. Uh, but the Sue Gray report publication, whenever that is, and it keeps slipping, uh, will be a moment of decision for Conservative MPs. And I think they will uh, decide to get rid of, uh, of their most successful leader uh, in the recent past.